60 Minutes Rewind. If the Democrats win a majority of seats in the House of Representatives on November 7th, the next Speaker of the House will almost certainly be Nancy Pelosi. She would be the first ever woman Speaker, second in the line of succession, just two heartbeats away from the presidency. The 66-year-old Congresswoman from San Francisco has represented one of the most liberal districts in the country for nearly 20 years. Since she was elected Democratic Leader of the House four years ago, she's been happy to push other members of Congress to the microphones to speak for the party. But now, she says, her time has come. More front and center lately, she has been the point person, for instance, in the party's attacks about the page scandal. She keeps promising that if she becomes speaker, she'd bring civility back to Washington. Just not now. You have called your Republican colleagues, right. these are quotes, immoral, corrupt. You say they're running a criminal enterprise. I mean, you're one of the reasons we have to restore civility in the first place. Well, actually, when I called them those names, I was being gentle. There are much <laughs> worse things I could have said about them. Oh, really? It's hard to imagine. No evidence of honest leadership in a failed Republican do-nothing Congress. Of the arrogance of power of the White House. Here she is on the president's handling of Katrina. The president said he's going to lead the investigation into what went wrong. He need to look only in the mirror, for starters. If you're speaker, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how you'll work with him. I mean, you, you, here are some of the things, only some of the things you have called him, an incompetent leader. Right. You said, in fact, he's not a leader. He's a person who has no judgment. Ooh, That's right. It even stings to, to hear it now. Mm. I mean, obviously, the two of you are bound to get along just great. <laughs> you know, it, we're professionals. We're professionals. Uh, you could go through a long list of things his surrogates have said about me. I know they have to do what they have to do, and they know I have to do what I have to do. And what I have to do is make a distinction in the public that between the Democrats and the Republicans in order to win. This isn't personal. This is about... It sounds personal. This isn't he's personal. He's incompetent. He's well, I think he is. But that's personal. Well, and he I'm no sorry. Job. That's his problem. <laughs> How does this raise the level of civility? Well, this is a, we're, well, we're in a political debate here. We didn't come here to have a tea party together and toss a coin to see who would win on an issue. I have very thick skin. I don't care what they say about me. And she needs that thick skin. Liberal Democrat leader Nancy Pelosi says she's being used for target practice. She'll reward illegal aliens with welfare, food stamps, and free education. How do we stop her? Republicans, including the president, go after her, saying if she's speaker, it'll mean a weaker military, pampering of terrorists, and higher taxes. When we lowered the taxes for families with children, she voted against it. When we put the death tax on the road to extinction, she voted against it. Time and time again, she had an opportunity to show her love for tax cuts. <laughs> and she voted no. Pelosi doubts the attacks will work, since most Americans have no idea who she is. Besides, at the urging of her colleagues, she has downplayed her pro-abortion rights, anti-gun position since becoming leader, instead promoting more centrist issues, like raising the minimum wage and energy independence. Well, you don't talk about the big liberal issues you used to fight for up here. I've never walked away from any of my positions. So I take pride in them. Gay marriage? Well, that's an, that's an issue that is not a, 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 an issue that we're fighting about here. One issue she is fighting about here is Iraq. Are we safer in America because of this war? She opposed the war from the start. And now, like her, most Democrats support a phased withdrawal of troops beginning later this year. Does that not open you up, then, to that charge of cutting and running? This is just what they're saying. The issue is them. The issue is the war that they got us into. If the president wants to say the war in Iraq is part of the war on terror, he's not right. Do you not think that the war in Iraq now, today, is the war on terror? No. The war on terror is the war in Afghanistan. But you don't that think that what, the terrorists have moved into so Iraq yes, now? they have, the well. jihadists in Iraq. But that doesn't mean we stay there. That means they'll stay there as long as we're there. They're there because we're there. What do you say to a Republican, I've heard this, 
um, that you, meaning the Democrats, but Nancy Pelosi as well, do not understand the serious nature of this threat yeah. of the jihadists. I, as a mother and a grandmother, 14 years on the Intelligence Committee, don't tell me I have any underestimation of what the threat is to our country. So if you want to justify your failed policy by saying we don't understand the threat, clearly you didn't understand the situation you got us into. You don't just go into a war as a, on a whim. The Democrats think Iraq is a winning issue for them, and so Pelosi fires away as she campaigns for different candidates almost every day. Here she is in Armani in Connecticut. Win this election, take the country in a new direction. Here she is in cowboy boots in Minnesota farm country. So have you been to Minnesota before? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Where she had not one pork chop on a stick. This is delicious. But two. So th this is Tip O'Neill's office? Pelosi's Capitol Hill office is the one once used by Tip O'Neill when he was speaker 20 years ago. Here's a picture when I was a little girl when I, I swore my father in when he became mayor of Baltimore. Nothing prepared her for power more than growing up in Baltimore, the daughter of Tommy D'Alessandro, an old school Democrat. She learned the secrets of political organizing when she used to help keep track of favors owed her father during his 12 years as mayor. I was pampered in the fact that I had five older brothers, which I highly recommend to anyone. Nancy was the youngest of six children and the only girl in a strict Catholic family. I wanted to be independent, and they were always, you know, oh, we can't do this, you can't do that, telling all the things I couldn't do. You never rebelled? No, I was, I was never? not. No, I wasn't even an option. This is the 50s. Did you ever sneak out? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi. Don't tell. Okay, no telling. <laughs> She loves to dance, which she does well. She loves to sing, which she doesn't do well. At college, she met her husband, Paul Pelosi, now a wealthy San Francisco investment banker. In fact, she's the eighth richest member of the house. He says he doesn't give his wife advice except for one thing. You buy her clothes? Oh. Well, she hates to shop. You pick out her clothes? Wow. Well... Sort of. Actually. I... I have... Yes. Yes. Paul Pelosi says that for years, a career in politics was the farthest thing from her mind. It, it wasn't even on the table. It wasn't even part of the discussion. It was never going to happen. nothing in her personality. It was never going to happen. So what happened? Well, we end up in San Francisco. We raise uh, our five children. And when the children were in school all day, uh, then she started uh, doing volunteer stuff. Five kids born six years in one week. So, so she September. was pregnant the whole time? For most of the 60s, yes. Christine, the second oldest of four daughters and one son, says her mother was the disciplinarian and drill sergeant in the family then, as she is in Congress now. So we were always expected to make sure that our homework was done and that we were prepared for what we did. She would always say, proper preparation prevents poor performance. <laughs> you had these little slogans? That we had these little slogans. <laughs> As the kids got older, Pelosi threw herself into state politics, eventually becoming chairman of the California Democratic Party. She didn't run for Congress till she was 46. And now at 66, as she's poised to go down in the history books, what Nancy Pelosi wants you to know is that when it comes to her real goal in life, she's just like any other woman her age. It's great. It's fabulous. It was my goal in life, and now I've achieved it. I'm a grandmother. <laughs> the story will continue after this. Ask Nancy Pelosi to describe herself, and the first thing out of her mouth is that she's a mother of five. The category is the Flintstones. And a grandmother of five. When I asked your daughter, Christine, how you rule, she said you were motherly. Yes, it depends on your definition of motherly. If motherly means uh, we're going to have order in the house, yes. That's motherly. <laughs> well, she certainly brought order to the Democrats. Thank she you. has insisted on no more bickering in public <laughs> and just saying no to nearly everything that comes out of the Bush White House. In other words, party discipline, kind of like the Republicans do it. As a result, Democrats now vote together more often than they have since Eisenhower was president. 
How has someone so clearly not one of the boys managed to keep them in line? Well, one way is money. Take my names off the checks, just give it to her. <laughs> she has personally raised more than $100 million, second only to Bill and Hillary Clinton, which she dispenses generously to her colleagues. Another way she rules is through good old-fashioned hardball. People say Nancy Pelosi is tough as nails. I'm very strong, I don't know tough, but every time I ask you about it, you retreat into, oh no, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. <laughs> No. You are tough. You have to. I mean, it I'm goes tough. without saying. You got there. You well, did it. I heard somebody say the other day when they said, you should see how tough she was on a certain subject. And yeah. one of my other colleagues said, you have no idea. One thing she does is threaten to deny plum assignments to members who vote with the Republicans. But by keeping her troops in lockstep, her critics say she has worsened the gridlock and partisan bitterness in Congress. What's this meeting about? Now, this meeting is our Democratic caucus. This is our last huddle. Pelosi took us to the last election strategy session House Democrats held before they went off to campaign. I'll lead it. Thank you. Thank you. The mood was buoyant, with credit going to Pelosi for bringing them so close to retaking the House with her strategy of not letting one Republican attack go unanswered. Let's hear it for the Democrats. Are we ready to win? With just 16 days to the election. Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker and first Madam Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, who already made history once when she became minority leader, thinks she's about to do it again. First of all, you have to understand, breaking the, um, here we call it the marble ceiling. This makes glass look like nothing. <laughs> this is a marble ceiling. Right. The Democrats are going to... And breaking it, she says, would help all women. Onwards. I believe if I become Speaker of the House, and in that highly visible role, show the American people that women know how to use power, that I think it helps all women in the political process or whatever field they're in, but I think it will be a plus. This is it. She has pledged that as Speaker, she would give the Republicans rights they've denied the Democrats, like allowing them to introduce amendments to bills. But she may have trouble reining in the Democrats' appetite for revenge. There's already been talk of multiple investigations and impeachment of the president. No, the, 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 uh, impeachment is off the off table. Off the table, and that's a pledge. Well, it's a pledge on the, uh, yes, I mean, it's a pledge. Of course it is. And, and, and does that it, it, is not, it is a waste of time. So that's completely off the table. Wouldn't they just love it if we came in and our record as Democrats coming forth in 12 years is to talk about George Bush and Dick Cheney? This election is about them. This is a referendum on them. Making them lame ducks is good enough for me.